All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome back to our exploration of the book of Enoch. Hallelujah. You know, and so we've been going through the book of Enoch, and as always, we've been trying to align it with uh, our measuring stick. Hallelujah. You know, Okay, so today we're going to get into Enoch chapter 60. Chapter 60. Yeah. Let's jump right in. Enoch 60, 1 through 4. Can I have my first reader read um, Enoch chapter 60, verses 1 through 4, please? In the year, in the year 500, in the seventh month of the 14th day, the month of the life of Enoch, in that parable I saw how a mighty quaking made heaven of the heaven of heavens to quake, and the host and the host of the host, high and the angels, a thousand, a thousand and thousands and ten thousands, times ten thousand. And the head of days sat on the throne of his glory, and the angels and the righteous stood around him. And great trembling seized, seized me, and fear and fear took hold of me, and fear took hold of me. My, my loins gave way and dissolved my dissolved from, from my reins, and I fell fell from my face. And Michael and Michael sent another angel among the holy ones, and he raised me up. When he raised me up, my ruach returned. For I had not been able to endure and look of this host. And the, the commotion and the, and the quaking of the heaven. Okay, so first of all. First of all, I want, I want to point out that, you know, just how Yasin Yah is, you know, and how, you know, how really, really relevant and, and you know, and, you know, that I don't know how to, how to even put it in, into words, but the way that Yah, when we pray and, and we choose, you know, the work that we're going to study, that we act, we pray to Yah and ask him to guide the hand to choose the work that he wants us to study. You know, I believe with everything in my heart that it is him who is doing the choosing. Yeah. And it's for reasons like this, you know, if you, if you look, mm -hmm. you know, at this message, this is a this is a tabernacle's message. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, that, that and, and it's not no coincidence that, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've been keeping tabernacles and, and here it is, this message comes up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, how can you explain that? You know, I mean, I, it's not even that I have a set schedule of how many um, chapters I'm going to read during each week. It just mm -hmm. happened to fall at, on, on this chapter during this time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just, that's uncanny to say, to say the least, you know. Um, and the odds are phenomenal. You know, but of course my answer is, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I just, you know, it's just little I week, um, y'all weeks like that that just, you know, blow my hair back. That's that's probably why I'm bald. Y'all keep blowing my hair back and it just come out, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that is just y'all. You know, so you see here the time is the seventh month, the 14th day. This is the day before it's happened after. You know, and he sees a parable of a mighty quaking, you know, that made the heavens to quake. All right, so, you know, this, you know, is, is a, a, a pretty solid pointer to when this is going to take place and as to what tabernacles, you know, speak to, you know, in the fulfillment of scripture. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, so this teaches us what the far off feasts are really all about. You know, it speaks to a time when Yah will shake the heavens. Mm -hmm. When he would make the heavens quake, it speaks of a time, you know, 
but he in his thousands and his thousands, thousands, and his ten thousands times ten thousands. Our student and Buddha, it speaks to the time when the head of days is sitting on the throne of his glory. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was so awesome that he says, a great trembling seized me and fear took hold of me, mm -hmm. you know, and fear took hold of me. And, you know, it was so frightening that he crapped his pants yeah. and urinated on himself and either fainted or died. Mm. You know, it's not always given away. That speaks to, you know, him spoiling himself and his reins being dissolved that speak to him urinating on himself. Mm. And when the spirit leaves the body, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you know, you can't live without a spirit. So say lie. Mm -hmm. This is how awesome this was that he saw. Mm -hmm. That this parable in which he saw. This is this is how awesome it was. I mean, you have to really grasp that. Mm -hmm. You know, it just makes you wonder what did he see that was so frightening? Mm -hmm. What did he see that was so frightening? And um and I have what did Enoch see, but actually I believe this this is um actually Noah. You know, it's, it's speaking of Noah, if I'm not mistaken. You know, but the point is, what was seen that caused this man to crap his pants, to urinate on himself, and just die on the spot or faint on the spot? It had to be something really, really off. Uh, um, Awesome or wonderful or or scary. Amen. I'm gonna tell you what it was. Mm. It was yeah, the day of Yahuwah. Mm. Yeah. That's what he saw. Mm. It was the day of Yahuwah. When we read in Haggai chapter two, verses five through seven, it says, According to the word that covenanted with you when you came out of Mitzrayim, so my ruach remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus saith Yahuwah Zavahot, yet once it is a little while, is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith Yahuwah Zavahot. Mm -hmm. mm. See, our measuring stick does speak to Yah shaking the heavens. Amen. Also consider Yeshayahu 13, 9 through 14. It says, Behold, the day of Yahuwah come. Cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, and the sun shall be darkened, and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. That's because the heavens will be shaken. And I will punish the world for their evil and mm -hmm. the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the wed, the golden wed to go feel. He says, therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place. Mm -hmm. In the wrath of Yahuwah Zavahot, in the day of his fierce anger, and it shall be as the chaste row and as the sheep that no man taketh up, that shall every man, that they shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone to his own land. Mm -hmm. So we see that this day of Yahuwah, that is when it comes, is going to be a day of cruelty, a day of wrath and fierce anger. Yeah. It'll be a day when Yah will issue out punishment. Mm -hmm. For the world, for their evil, mm -hmm. and for the wicked, for their iniquity. Mm -hmm. He says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, mm -hmm. even a man than the golden wedges of, of all fear. Mm -hmm. See, now you don't you wouldn't understand that unless you understand, you know, money. Mm -hmm. Unless you understand value. See, the thing that gives things give 
thinks their value is its rarity. Mm -hmm. The more rare something is, the more valuable it is. Mm -hmm. When you have something that that's everywhere, then it's not very valuable. It's supply and demand. But when you have a one of a kind, it becomes very valuable. You know, so what's being what we're being told here is that man, mm -hmm. mankind will be made rare. Mm -hmm. Hence, they'll be, you know, the fine, the fine one will be like finding gold mm -hmm. or a golden wedge of gold fear, because they that's how rare they're gonna be. See, you have to understand. He says, therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth will remove out of her place in the wrath of Yahuwah Zavuot and in the day of his fierce anger. He speaks of it being as one chased by the road or a sheep that no man take it up. You know, they're running in fear. See, when something chases the road, the road is afraid. That's why he runs and that's why he runs so fast. Enoch 60, verses 5 and 6. My next reader, please. And Michael said unto me, Why art thou disquieted with such a vision? Until this day last of the day of his mercy, and he hath been merciful and long suffering towards those that dwell on the earth. And when the earth and the power and the punishment and the judgment come, which Yahuwah of Rakot hath prepared for those who worship not the righteous law, and for those who deny the righteous judgment, and for those who take his name in vain, that day is prepared. For the elect, a covenant, but for uh, sinners, an inquisition. When the punishment of Yuah of Yahuwah of Rakot shall rest upon them, it shall rest in the order of the punishment of Yahuwah of Rakot may not come in vain. And it shall slay the children with their mothers and the children with their fathers. Afterwards, the judgment shall take place according to his mercy and his patience. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because until this day lasted the day of his mercy. So you have to understand that when the day of Yahuwah comes, his mercy is over. Mm -hmm. See, until this day lasted the day of his mercy, his mercy does have an end. Says that he have been merciful and long suffering towards those who dwell on the earth, but there's coming a time when his mercy gonna run out. And he says, and when the day and the power and the punishment and the judgment come, see, this is what the day of Yahuwah is about. It's when Yah shows himself mighty. See, man showing himself mighty right now, but there's coming a day. When Yah will show himself mighty. And it says that the day is prepared for the elect, the covenant. See, now, you know, a lot of people, you know, think because, you know, they accepted um, Yahshua the Messiah and they, they think because they entered into covenant with him, you know, they think that, you know, his law has been written on their hearts. It has not. If his law has been written on, on your heart, then you wouldn't be able to. To so easily go against it. Right. See, but during this time, they will enter into a covenant whereby the law will be written on their hearts and they will no more stray. Now, this is what's spoken of in Yermiyahu 3240, where he speaks about making a new covenant. Let us consider Yeshayahu 13, 15 through 18. It says, everyone that is found shall be thrust through. See, this is what, this is what was being seen. You know, this is what, what had, had uh, Noah so shook. It says, everyone that is found shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Mm -hmm. See, this is why you, this is why you read in scripture says, come out of her, my people. Yeah. And Yah's people will come out. Yeah. But those who remain, because they love their mother or their father, their sister, or their brother more than Yah, mm. will be thrust through with the sword. Mm. It says in verse 16, their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravaged. 
You know, isn't this what the book of Enoch was saying? It said in verse six, and it shall slay the children with their mothers and the children with their fathers. And here, yes, Yahoo 6, 13, 16 is saying, their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the meats against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. So you have to understand. It says, behold, I will stir up the meats against them. The meat speaks to those who believe their king is God. So this speaks to the man of sin who will be sitting on the throne exalting himself above everything that is of Elohim. Proclaiming himself to be El. See, this is what that's talking about. Behold, I will stir up the knees against him. It says their bowls also shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. That aligns with our, with our measuring stick pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Consider Amos. Amos 5, it speaks to, to this time. It says, woe. Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahuwah. You know, I hear sometimes people saying, you know, I just you know, pray that Yah she would just come back tomorrow. Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahuwah. To what end is it for you? The day of Yahuwah is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion in a bear metal. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall in a serpent bit. Shall not the day of Yahuwah be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of the vials. His mercy cometh to an end. The day of Yahuwah is when it cuts off. Better make sure you in before then. Right. See, he won't take, he said, take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. He says, I will not hear the melody of thy vials, but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Yes, Yahoo 24, 1 and 2. Behold, Yahuwah maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lenders, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury. The land shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled. For Yahuwah have spoken this word. And you know it won't be turned to a void. Right. Hmm. See, this is what my man was singing. This is why he began to, fear took hold of him. And he began to quake and, and, and shake and, and spoiled his pants and fell out. Says the earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languish and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth is also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and a few men left. So this aligns with everything else in, in that, you know, men will be rare. It's only going to be a few of them left. It's going to be hard pressed to find one. Yoel, Joel, 
chapter 2, 1 through 5. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of Yahuwah come, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after even to the years of many generations, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as a garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as a horseman, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stuff. As a strong people set in battle array. See, this is Yah's destruction of the wicked. You know, this is the burning up of the tares. You know, like the noise of a flame of a fire that devour the stubble. You know, you know, remember the parable of Yahshua with the wheat and the tares and how he said, you know, first that uh, the angels have to come back and they have to gather, they have to gather, they're first going to gather the, uh, the tares and, and they're going to burn them. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Remember that? Yes, yes Yahoo 24, 4 through 6. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth is also, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. So you, you have to you have to see how serious Yah is about his Torah. You have to see how serious he is about his ordinances, about breaking his covenant. He says, this is the reason. Therefore the curse devoured the earth. And they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned. This is why they get burned. This is why only a few men is left. Because they, they want to do away with Torah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want to do away with the laws of the Most High. You know, which just, it baffles the mind when you consider all that Yah went through to present his laws to the world. Mm -hmm. To present them to Israel. You know, how he came from the heavens upon Mount Sinai and with a great, with great thundering and and the blowing of the uh, of the shofar, the trumpet blowing blowing long, it was a big ordeal. It was huge. Mm -hmm. It was never before done, and never since. How can you possibly think something so yasum and dramatic after going through all that trouble that he just gonna Say okay, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know, I know that was that was that was a little overkill. Um, never mind that. I mean, think, people, think. You know, you read over and over and over and over throughout Scripture about how Yah punishing His people and and pers and causing them to be persecuted and causing them to die off. And causing them to be taken captive. And it's all because they go against his law. Yes. Now he's just going to, you know, one day say, well, you know, well, you don't got to keep it no more. Never mind. Right. So did all them people died for nothing. Right. But I could have sworn I read in Malachi, he says, I'm Yahuwah, I change of not. Right. No one would argue that you still shouldn't murder. Right. No one would argue with, with, with many of them. You know, it's because of this that the inhabitants of the earth are going to burn. First time he purified and cleansed the earth of water by flood, but the second time it's going to purify it 
the fire. So, you know, I pray that you can see this because this is, you know, this is imperative, you know, that one understands. Yeah, seem to be having some technical difficulties. Okay. Let me have my next reader read Enoch 60, verses 7 through 10, please. And on that day were two monsters part. A female monster named Leviathan to dwell in the abyss of the ocean over the fountains of the waters. But the male is called Behemoth, who occupied with his breast a vast wilderness named do that do do drain on the east of the garden where the elect and righteous dwell where my grandfather was taken up the seventh from adam the first man whom yahuwah created and i besought the other angel that he should show me the might of those monsters how they were parted on the day and cast the one into the abyss of the sea and the other into the dry land of the wilderness. And he said to me, thou son of man, herein thou doest see to know what is hidden. Hallelujah. So here it is, you know, it speaks of two monsters. You know, these are the very same two monsters that Revelation speaks of. You know, the two beasts. It says a female monster named Leviathan. Mm. You know, I always thought Leviathan was a male. Mm. You know, we read about Leviathan in the book of Job, right? Mm -hmm. You know, as well as Behemoth. We read about both of them in the book of Job. You know, but hereby we learn that Leviathan is a female monster. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, and to dwell in the abyss of the ocean. Mm. over the fountains of the waters mm. you know but the male mm -hmm. is called behemoth mm -hmm. who occupied with his breast a vast wilderness named Dudain, Dudain or Dudel and there's other similar um, terms for it which is on the east of the garden where the elect and the righteous dwell mm. you know if you, if you recall when we were doing the study um when we was doing uh, one of the previous chapters, this is exactly where Azazel, mm -hmm. where he was uh, in prison at. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you have these two monsters or these two dragons, if you will, these two beasts, if you would. We have these, these, these two, you know, ones in the waters and ones in the wilderness. You know, what the water speaks to the multitudes, the nations, and the tongues. So we have one beast that's in the midst of the multitudes, the nations, and the tongues. And that's Leviathan, but Behemoth is in the wilderness. Who else is in the wilderness? We are, absolutely. Yah's people are in the wilderness. Yes. Mm. Need I say more? Mm -hmm. Say a lot. Let me have my next reader read Enoch 60, 11 through 15, please. And the other angel who went with the went with him. Went with me. Went with him and showed me what was hidden, told me what is the first and last in the heavens in the height and beneath the earth in the depths and at the ends of the heavens and on the foundations of the heavens 
and the chamber of winds and how the winds are driven and how they are weighed and how the portals of the winds are reckoned each according to the power of the wind and the power of the lights of the moon and according to the power that is fitting and the division of the stars according to the names and how all the divisions are divided and the thunder according to the places where they fall and all the divisions that are made among the lightnings that it may lighten and their hosts that they may at once obey for the thunder has has places of rest which are assigned to it while it is waiting for its pearl, peel. And the thunder and lightnings are inseparable. Mm -hmm. And all, though not one, and undivided. They both go together through the Ruach and separate not. But when the lightning lightens, the thunder utters its voice. Mm -hmm. and the Ruach enforces a pause during the pearl, pearl peel and divides equally between them. For the treasury of their peel is like the sand, and each one of them, as it peels, is held in with a bridle, and turned back by the power of the Ruach, and pushed forward according to the many quarters of the earth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. So, when the lightning lightens the thunder utters its voice you know i measure stick speaks about thunder speaking revelations 10 1 through 4 and i saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head and his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire and he had in his hand a little book open and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth where was the monsters one was in the sea and one was in the earth right say a lot and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roared could this be the lion of judah and when he had cried seven thunders uttered their voices and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Thought we was about to get it. Nah. Enoch 60, 16, verse 18, on Exodus 3. And the rock of the sea is masculine and strong, and according to the might of his strength, he draws it back with a rain, and in like manner it is driven forward and disperses amid all the mountains of the earth. And the ruach of the hoarfrost is his own angel, and the ruach of the hail is a good angel. And the rock of the snow has forsaken his chamber on account of his strength. There is a special rock there, in, and that which ascends from it is like the smoke, and its name is Frost. Now, you know, I was thinking about this, and, and I really, I really think that these, these rocks, well, let, let, let us finish first. All right, let me have my next read, read verses 19 through 24, please. And the Ruach of the mist is not united with them in their chambers, but it has a special chamber, for its course is glorious both in light and in darkness, and in winter and in summer, and in its chamber is an angel. And the other angel who went with me and showed me what was hidden to me, what is first and last in the heaven and in the height, and beneath the earth, in the depth, and at the ends of the earth, and on the foundation of the earth. And the Ruach of, of the dew has its dwelling at the ends of the heaven, and is connected with the chambers of the rain, and its course is in winter and summer, and its clouds and the clouds of the mist are connected, and one gives to the other. And when the Ruach of the rain goes forth from its chamber, the angels come and open the chamber and lead it out. And when it is diffused over the whole earth, it unites with the water on the earth. 
and whensoever it unites with the water on the earth. For the waters are for those who dwell on the earth, for they are nourishment for the earth from the Most High, who is in heaven. Therefore, there is a measure for the rain, and the angels take it in charge. And these things I saw towards the garden of the righteous. And the angel of peace who was with me said to me, These two monsters prepare conformably to the, to the greatness of Elohim shall be. Yes. Yes, I wonder what they consume. Mm -hmm. You know, now this is supposition on my part, and I usually don't, don't present my supposition. Um, and so I, I don't do it without precursor. You know, but this is supposition on my part, but you know, I do believe that these Ruachs that's being spoken of are the very same Ruachs that blow the seven trumpets that we read about in Revelation. You know, and uh, I believe they coincide with the seven churches mm. in our actuality. And hence, you know, we have two that are favorable mm. and we have you know, five does does not, and there's seven Ruachs that's presented here in total. You know, and you know that just seems like just more than a coincidence. You know, but again, that's supposition on my part. You know, um, you know, take it for what it's worth. Yeah. That's all I have for you today. Pray it was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.